Howdy fellow model railroaders, my name is Kevin Brown. I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. This episode I'm going to concentrate on running my operating scheme. I've got a, a slightly different way of filming that and uh, I hope you'll enjoy that. And also my group, the Enskill of Bloomington Normal, got together and we had a, uh, a private train show. I got some footage from that so uh, that ought to be fun to look at. Uh, before I get into that, though, I want to go over uh, something new I got for the layout, so stay tuned. Here's the kit I ordered to uh, make uh, my flat structure for Federal Foods on uh, the Blair Yard side. It's a nice kit. I really like it. I think it'll fit the bill nicely. So uh, let's see how it's going to fit. Here's the uh, basic kit. Uh, I blue taped it together to put it on the yard or uh, at the back of the yard. You can see it had I doubled it out, made it twice as long as it uh, is designed to be, and has a nice little dock uh, dock there. And this completes all the structures for uh, Blair Yard. I think that'll look very nice. I thought I'd give a quick overview of my operating scheme, but before I start. Uh, showing the footage from the operating session itself. Uh, I thought I'd sit, start back here because this is kind of the heart of the operations. This is my staging yard. Uh, I have eight trains that I run as part of my operating session. That's four passenger trains, two in each direction, two manifest freights, uh, one in each direction that go through Blair Yard and drop off and pick up cars, and two uh, uh, unit trains, which right now Eventually, I'd like to make them into uh, manifest rates as, as well, but for the moment, this seems to work. In addition, in the future, I've got a little stub track over there I managed to have room for, and I want to put one more uh, train into the operating session, which will be the transfer job, but that's for the future. Um, the way I run my trains, it's a, basically it's a sequential operating system, just running one train after another, because... I have this lovely throttle that lets you uh, con uh, control two trains at once. I tend to release my trains uh, two at a time. I like having the interplay of train between train, and uh, I have a double track main line, so that means I can keep both trains running. One is kind of active, doing its job, while the other one more or less just gets in the way and plays spoiler. Uh, that I really enjoy that. That really keeps me going as far as operating. Now, I also have a sequential list of how I do stuff and cross off as each train goes through. This session takes quite a lot of time. I rarely have enough time to do this all at once. So it's done over a series of days and this helps me keep track of exactly where I'm at in the operating scheme. When I get a little time, I come down, run a train or two, I mark it off and uh, get ready for the next time. Um, this is kind of a disaster right now. I've been making some modifications to it and I'll, I'll update it pretty quick, but it works for, right now. It works quite well. So that's how I handle uh, dispatching on the layout. Uh, for freight car forwarding, if you've been with me at all, any time at all, I use the car cart waybill system. Uh, I use the Micromark uh, uh, starter set. I've, I've had great luck with that. That, that really gets you started. I can't uh, recommend that enough. Um, so that's kind of how uh, I go through my operations. Now I wanted to try something different this time as far as filming it. Uh, I find filming uh, anything while I'm trying to run it very difficult. It's uh, a study in multitasking and I'm barely a monotasker. So uh, I thought I'd do something different this time and set the camera up at Brownsville and we'll just do rail fanning there and show how the operations affect that one area, which also happens to be my most scenic. So uh, uh, sit back and watch and enjoy, and I'll show you how the uh, day on the Brownsville Terminal is.
So there you have it, a uh, busy day for the Brownsville Terminal at the main station of Brownsville. Um, I have, right now my operating scheme is just set up for one operator, me, and I really want to expand that. I, I have dreams of uh, having a total of four operators on this layout eventually, two on the main line, one running the yard, another one being dispatcher. Well, that's, that's in the future. I would also like to uh, eventually play with the idea of fast time for my dispatching system. Uh, I think that would add quite a lot to it. And because I've got s such a huge uh, passenger traffic, I think that would be quite appropriate to keep track of time like that. So that's all for the future. For the moment, I'm having a ball run on my trains, and I think it's important to run your layout once in a while, just see where all the problems are. I, I like to get all the... Uh, as many problems as po as possible in track work, etc., taken care of before the scenery goes down. So th this is all part of that that basic idea. Um, so uh, moving on, um, my group, the N Scale Bloomington Normal, we had an opportunity to set up our, uh, our T track modules at a, at a show. It was just for us. It was a private affair. Uh, it happened to be at a, a very wonderful venue. It's up a, a, a it used to be a huge private mansion that is now owned by uh, Illinois State University's foundation. And uh, they allowed us to set up in basically a garage, but it worked out quite well. It was a good time and I got some footage, so uh, sit back. I hope you enjoy it. We had a huge discussion many times about how we got one of the two tracks and the double. Yeah. To make it a whole super old and hope can't find it. Did it run right? Maybe it went to the other I don't know. I've always had bad luck with them. Me too, truthfully. You got you get what you pay for. And that means you pay a lot for a good one. <laughs> I got a brand new model power of Mikado straight out of the hobby shop. I think it was like over a hundred dollars and it didn't work. It didn't even run. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> After that, I you know, started only yeah, buying nice. engine the engine. Going way back to the bad old days of N scale. I mean, it wasn't much. Criteria for a layout was it has to run. It has to work. It has to work. 
It sure was fun getting a chance to run trains with everybody again. Uh, some of our members from out of town uh, showed up, which is always good to be connected with them, as well as some of our members that don't get around so well anymore and have trouble getting to some of our meets. This was perfect. Everything was uh, easy in, easy out. So again, uh, just a wonderful uh, uh, weekend of running trains and at a, at a really cool venue. That was quite nice, too. Now, as luck would have it, the normal public library contacted us about resurrecting our train show there. We've, we've had a long history of working with that uh, organization. Uh, they put on various kids' activities that are train-related. We set up our layouts. It's, it's just a great time, and it's a good way to kind of meet the, uh, the local public. Um, this year is going to be a little different. It's going to be a lot of little layouts, the idea of trying to help with the whole social distancing thing. We can adapt. This This sounds kind of interesting, and I think that's going to be uh, a big part of my uh, next video. Um, on next video, uh, it's probably going to be a while before I get a chance to post the next one. Uh, uh, in a couple weeks, my wife and I are going on a vacation. We're going to go out to uh, Las Vegas, My uh, go to my brother's wedding, and uh, do some sightseeing and, uh, and visit some people. So that'll be fun. That'll also be part of the next video. So it may be a few extra weeks before the next one, but uh, stay tuned. There'll be some good stuff in it. Um, well, that's about all I've got for this video. I hope you like what you saw. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.